Dr. Justin Moyers is going to talk to us about um, advanced non-melanoma skin cancers and emerging treatments and in that area. And he comes to us from the Angeles Clinic up in Santa Monica. So thank you so much, Justin, for joining us. Yeah, thank you for inviting me, um, Sue, and all the Melanoma Consortium. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about some systemic therapies for um, non-melanoma skin cancers, focusing on cutaneous squamous and basal cell. Um, I, I do medical oncology uh, along as uh, like Dr. Park and Dr. Daniels um, here at the Angels Clinic, um, which is affiliated with Cedar Sinai. And here's our building um, and Cedar Sinai Clinic. Um, so outlining what we'll talk about is um, basal cell carcinoma, targeted therapy and immunotherapy, cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma, targeted therapy, or sorry, immunotherapies, and then um, you know what sort of new treatments. Um, this is a wide topic, so um, you know, going to try to um, cover some of the essentials. Um, and so, when do we give systemic therapies in non-melanoma skin cancers? When the tumor is too big to remove by surgery is the primary reason. And um, Dr. Park um, talked about a little bit more about this on um, new adjuvant therapies. The other reason we could we give this therapy is if the tumor is spread to other parts of the body, or we call that metastatic or um, stage four, as Dr. Daniels um, talked about in his staging slides. Um, uh, first of all, talking in um, basal cell cancer um, is you know targeted therapies. Um, so what is targeted therapy? Um, we use we look at the tumor. We can do some profiling of the um, DNA and find out if there's any specific alterations. Um, and uh, by finding these alterations, hopefully these can help predict treatments that might work and um, kind of separate out patients by specific alterations in their tumors. And in basal cell carcinoma, we know that there's a um, most, most, the majority of tumors have an alteration in their hedgehog signaling pathway. And um, there's two proteins that kind of that uh, interact here, um, but the smoothen protein um, signals cells to divide, and this patched protein prevents the smooth smoothen from signaling. Um, so when hedgehog is present, patch can't um, restrain smoothen, so the signal is sent, and these cancer cells divide. So this is what causes cancer essentially in these basal cells, and most of them. Um, and so what can we use? Vismotigib um, or Synergib or similar drugs, and they both um, block the smoothen protein so that the cells can not um, divide and kind of slows the cancer down. And so um, what we have seen is that when you give this drug, the vismotigib, um, to, to these basal cell carcinomas that are large or metastatic, you see that the tumors shrink. On the left side of this um, PowerPoint, this is what we call waterfall plot, and all the bars that are going down from zero mean that the tumors are shrinking, and the bars going up um, are having tumors grow. And so you can see that the majority of patients had the tumors shrink on these oral treatments, um, and some of which even having 100% of the tumor. So the whole entire tumor that they measure go away. Um, the trouble with this treatment, though, is, as you can see here, that how median duration response, how long does the treatment work, uh, um, is, oh, sorry, wrong line right here, um, you know, it's about eight months or so. So these treatments, they work really well when they work, but, you know, the, the responses are, aren't durable. They, tumors, unfortunately, can start growing after, you know, eight months to a year or so. Here's an example of one of these um, <clears throat> tumors that have um, shrunk substantially. So on the left, line on the left line is the base baseline of the tumor on the right column is after treatment so you can see that these tumors shrink substantially this is from the article of that paper maybe an easier example to see is this large tumor on this this person's scalp has shrunk down to just a scarred skin after 20 weeks the trouble with these targeted therapies is they cause side effects the most common side effects people get are fatigue they can get taste changes hair loss, muscle spasms, um, and then GI side effects, as well as some bone and joint pains. Um, but uh, so this, the side effects, you know, they don't sound, sometimes, they may not sound like they're um, awful, but for many patients, they, they can be pretty limiting um, to using the drug. 
Um, what's the other option is immunotherapy. Um, Sue discussed this a little bit, um, but the uh, or a lot of it, I should say. Um, but there's these drugs called checkpoint inhibitors. The um, the first one that was approved in the non melanoma skin cancers is one called semeplumab or Lebtio is the brand name for it. Um, and what they try to do is um, they attach to proteins on the cancer cell, as well as these T cells. The T cells are constantly looking around your body for, um, you know, viruses and bacteria and infections, but they're also looking around for cancerous cells. And so these PD-1 checkpoint inhibitors kind of um, invigorate the immune system to attack the cancer. Um, this trial um, proved that these immunotherapy drugs can work to, for patients even after they've had hedgeho hedgehog inhibitors and basal cell ca cancers. And, you know, we saw that they had shrinking and the tumors um, were, um, you know, staying shrunk for, you know, a while. So at, at um, the median time to getting the tumors to shrink was about four months, which is a little bit longer than the check, the, sorry, the um, hedgehog inhibitors. Um, but these responses are more durable. Um, they 60% of patients have um, disease control. And, you know, like, like you said, sometimes you can shrink them enough um, to do surgery, which can really, you know, cure the disease, we think. Um, this just tells us, you know, over 50% of the people had their tumors shrink and stay shrink, you know, even a year and a half into the treatment. Um, this the checkpoint inhibitors have been successful in melanoma and many other cancers and, and basal cell, like we just discussed. Um, so semilipamab, which was approved in the other non-melanoma skin cancer, um, is also approved in um, cutaneous squamous. And so this is based on a trial where they um, gave the semilipamab every two weeks um, for up to a couple of years. And they saw, again, the waterfall plot up in the upper left, that most of the patients had shrinkage of their tumors. And in fact, if you look in the red highlighted box, about half of the patients, 50% roughly, um, had tumors that um, shrank while on the treatment. Here's an example of the case, maybe not as dramatic as the ones that Sue showed, but this is from the paper, um, uh, the research paper that led to the approval. And so you can see that this, um, this guy had um, uh, squamous cell lumps on his head that went away, another guy with one right behind the ear. Um, and so what are the side effects of the immunotherapy? So immunotherapy can lead to acute toxicities, as in this first um, lump on the graph, and then chronic problems as well, and then can also even impact other immune processes, we think. And so what are the side effects? So I often tell patients that the side effects of these immune checkpoint inhibitors are they can cause an autoimmune disease in anywhere from head to the toe. But the most common thing are rash or um, diarrhea or thyroid. Um, but the list can include this whole wide range of um, side effects. Um, that being said, the average patient does pretty well on the checkpoint inhibitors, especially for these non melanoma skin cancers. Um, but when people do get side effects, most of the time they're, they're short-lived but some of them can be more, you know, more long-term. So um, when it affects your GI system, diarrhea, or um, your liver, usually it's medium to short-term, whereas the vitiligo, if that happens, most people that persists and um, doesn't go away um, uh, in, 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 uh, in short-term. So um, we talked about reef, so, there are several chemotherapies approved for these non melanoma skin cancer. Um, and uh, we I chose to focus today on kind of the newer drugs. And so this takes us to look at the last decade. So we've talked about vismotigem and sinitigem. They're both these hedgehog inhibitors or smoothing inhibitors. Um, and we talked about simipumab, which is the first checkpoint um, agent approved in both of the non melanoma skin cancers. Um, <clears throat> pembrolizumab is also now approved in cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma. And so um, what's next? So lots of the thing focuses on immunotherapy more so than targeted therapy because of how immunogenic, how um, noticeable these tumors are to the immune system. And so the immunotherapy has allowed the field of oncology to turn the corner and there's even durable cures um, for patients with metastatic melanoma as well as non-melanoma non-melanoma skin cancers. However, uh, many of these 
many of the patients' tumors are cold and they don't respond as well to the immunotherapies. And so lots of times we're using, um, we're, we're looking for um, combinations that may work in clinical trials. And so for cancer immunotherapy, um, there's several different um, types of agents we think about or strategies we think about. And here the spoke illustrates six of them. So um, the first one, like we just mentioned, is checkpoint inhibitors. These are the ones where the tumor cell and the T cell, we try to get that interaction to be um, um, propagated further and to lead to the cell dying, uh, the cancer cell dying. And um, in melanoma, there's a recent checkpoint um, a new recent new combination approved for LAG3. Um, and this uh, is called Updualag. It uses nivolumab and rilumab um, through two different checkpoints in order to try to um, cause the cancer to be destroyed. And so this is a new strategy in melanoma. And most of the treatment strategies for immunotherapy have started melanoma and then go on to other cancers. So maybe this will end up in non-melanoma skin cancers as well. Um, the next spoke on the wheel is um, looking at a vaccination with um, uh, cancer-specific antigen. So trying to look at um, specific proteins or um, inflammatory markers in the, um, in the cancer and then injecting those into the body to see if we can get the immune system to respond. Um, the next spoke is you know oncolytic viruses. Um, there's several on, there's one oncolytic virus approved in melanoma and several um, under um, study. And how these work is they they um, are injected either into the tumor or into the body to try to release and tumor antigens to get your body's immune system to um, respond respond to the tumor. <clears throat> and um, one study that uh, I think several of the institutions have had is sur the SURPASS study where they used RP1, which is injected into tumors, along with the semiflumab drug to see if that could cause shrinkage. The full results of this haven't been um, published yet, but you know the preliminary looked pretty interesting for um, melanoma and the non-melanoma skin cancer. So we're anxious to see what this shows. Um, the next spoke on the wheel, um, you know, one that's kind of combining a couple of things, and this is a a, a study that Sue is, uh, Dr. Park, sorry, um, is uh, uh, enrolling at UCSD, where they use a um, this drug called um to activate the T cell response. And so this kind of acts in several ways, it looks like, you know, by trying to drive this interferon and then also drive the T cells to respond to cancers. And it looks like she's looking for cutaneous squamous cells, basal cell carcinomas, and Merkel cell um, cancers um, for this trial. Um, and the last spoke of the wheel we'll talk about today, um, CAR T cell therapy. This is perhaps the hottest topic. And um, these therapies are very interesting, very um, costly, and very um, uh, uh, in labor intensive to develop. And so how, how do they do this? Usually involves collecting blood or tissue from um, the tumor in patients, and then isolating the T cells, um, and then modifying, genetically modifying those T cells in order to um, form something called a chimeric antigen receptor T cell. Then they grow these T cells in the lab, and then they infuse them into patients after, sometimes after giving chemotherapy. And <clears throat> these cancer CAR T cells bind to the cancer based on their genetic modifications and try to destroy it. So far, these um, CAR T cells have been extremely useful and um, promising in lymphomas. However, you know, haven't translated as, as well into solid tumors. So looking at both CAR T cells and t um, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes could be other strategies used in cutaneous squamous cells and basal cell cancers. Um, and so that's that was a whirlwind um, look at uh, the systemic therapies in um, non-melanoma skin cancers. Thank you.